As Thomas Joseph says, so when I look at my parents or an image, the memory of the intrusive thought shows up. So how do I get over that? So what? I mean, don't you walk in the street and see some dog shit there? What do you want to do with it? Are you supposed to correct everything that is wrong in the world? We like to, but we can. We don't have that resources. We don't have that time. Brain makes 80, 90,000 thoughts a day, all intrusive. None of them have anything to do with you. You did not ask it, initiate it, instigate it for it to be made. Brain does that. So what do you want to do? For every one of these 80, 90,000, you want to go in there. So why they're there? They shouldn't be there. The way you deal with these things is that you accept thoughts, images, suggestions can be there. Just like you accept because you have no choice in the outside world. When you walk in the street, you can see a dog shit on the street. You can see garbage over there. You can see people saying things, uttering things that is not in line with your values or doing things that is not in line with your values or they're interested in certain food that you don't like, certain activities, certain sports, whatever. There's so many things that you are not interested in, but they yet exist in the world. And you have accepted the fact that they can exist. They don't need to be part of your life. You don't want them to be part of your life, but you accept the fact that they exist. But you navigate your own way toward the destination and the pathways that you are interested in. Where you want to go, how you want to negotiate that road to somewhere that you, attend, you intend to go. Same thing with the thoughts and images and suggestions of the brain. When it shows up, what does it have to do with me? Your problem is that you think because it shows up in the screen of my head and my head is on top of me, <laughs> therefore the screen is part of the apparatus of the brain and it's happening, the screen, the image where it belongs to me as far as the real estate is concerned, then you think it's got to do with you. Because it's using the screen of your brain and you can see it, you take the responsibility for it that as if it has anything to do with you, as if it pertains you. It doesn't. Your problem is that you have not come to understanding that the brain is separate than you. Brain is not you. You're not the brain. Brain has its own functions and malfunctions. And your awareness is the one who actually chooses or vetoes all these what's available outside or inside our heads. So just like you have dealt with the outside world, you also accept thoughts and images and bullshits can exist. Brain does that. Okay. Brain is no different than the next person out in the street that has no connection to you and it's a separate entity. Brain is also a separate system, happened to be mounted on your head. But it is not you. It can do its own shit. It can malfunction and create garbage and images, so on, unrelated to you, and you have no interest in them. So just like all the other things that you're not interested that exist in the outside world, in the streets and other cities and towns or wherever you go, you also allow thoughts to exist, images to exist. Instead of trying to vanish them and destroy them and burn them and bomb them and they shouldn't be there. It, it means disrespect to my parents or this. No. There could be images that you're fucking your father if your father is fucking you or whatever else. These are not a responsibility of yours. These are the glitches of the brain. As we have discussed many times before, there is a mechanism in the brain to stop intrusive thoughts. 
the striatum, midbrain, basal ganglia. The lever is called caudate nucleus. Caudate nucleus's job is to shut down the intrusive thoughts as they appear. Because the wisdom of whatever created us and placed this amazing apparatus of the brain to assist us in what we want to capture in life and bring to fruition or advance ourselves, also had the wisdom to know that this brain is going to malfunction because our brain is a work in progress. We didn't have this brain 40,000 years ago, but we did exist way before the 40,000 years. So for millions of years we existed, only 40,000 years ago, this apparatus of the brain, the way it seems today, was added to us. And it's still being developed, and it still has glitches. The wisdom of the Creator, whatever it is in your mind, allowed a mechanism to be part of this brain to counter the glitches and to counter the malfunctions. In this particular case, is called a lever called caudate nucleus in a striatum in midbrain basal ganglia. Its job is to shut down intrusive thoughts because brain makes all kinds of thoughts and it doesn't know what it makes because brain is not your intelligence. With the experiments that the neuroscientists and neurosurgeons such as Dr. Spiri, Dr. Penfield of Montreal in 1960s or 70s or earlier maybe, I'm not sure of the date, they operated over thousands of different times on brain and uh, they could never localize an intelligence center in the brain. They could localize motoring system, like they could stimulate part of the brain and a limb would move. They could stimulate the occipital point in the back of the head and the eye would see maybe a sight or a light. They could mm, stimulate somewhere that the speech would be stimulated. They could localize speech center. They could localize sight center. They could localize motoring center. But they could never localize passion center, compassion center, consciousness center, political center, mathematics center, love center. They could not localize uh, anything of that. So gender center. So, what it is, is that brain is oblivious to your gender or these and that so forth. So, when these images show up, it's not a message. It's just a fucked up, malfunctioning brain. <laughs> that's, that's all there is. And the wisdom of the creator was that there is going to be malfunction while this brain maybe someday eventually progresses and becomes a lesser glitching apparatus. Until then, he or she, which is going to be great, very, very politically correct about the creator, he or she <laughs> decided to put a lever to shut down the intrusive thoughts that is not in line with your values. And it is obvious what your center is, what your values are, what your gender is, what your inclination is, what your life policies and preferences are. And call it nucleus when a type of a thought that is not in line with your values shows up, you go, oh, that's nasty, and then shuts it down, and then it disappears. In OCD brains, this shutdown doesn't take place as it used to, and it always did. So, the thought or the image or suggestion, when it's not shut down by this particular apparatus or mechanism, it hovers. When it hovers, you think, well, it must be a reason that it hovers. You don't think that there's a malfunction because we all think we are perfect. What, malfunction in me? Are you kidding me? We don't think that way. We think because it's hovering, it must mean something. There must be a message. It has to do with my gender is changing. No, it could be anything of thought sort. 
that is not in line with your values, and it could still stay there because corded nucleus is not doing its job. That is when you come to understand the brilliant psychology, psycho psychotherapists, and uh, people who spend their life on research, such as Dr. Schwartz, Dr. Philipson, and so on. They teach us how to use certain systems and certain procedures to rewire the malfunctioning brain through neuroplasticity. For example, Dr. Schwartz has the four steps, which have had a video on it and explain all the four steps and how you go through it, interpret it for you. They relabel, you know, reframe, refocus, and revalue, and then what they're involved, what they mean, and how to continuously, every time these thoughts, intrusive thoughts show up, to apply the four steps to be able to rewire your brain. Brain can be conditioned like anything else. The more you do of something, the more the brain becomes conditioned to do that something very good. Like when you want to play piano, the more practice you do, the better you become. Because every the more you practice you do, the synaptic neurons create a connection where they can pass along the neurotransmitters and they create bridges so these neurotransmitters between the two ends of the synaptic neurons can pass through and you become expert in that what you've been practicing so much of, like piano playing. And the reverse of it is also correct. So in this example, if you are constantly ruminating on the images and on these thoughts that they show up, why they show up, how do they dare, uh, what does that mean, and you want to destroy it and you spend more time and interaction with those intrusive thoughts, what you're doing, you're actually allowing to program and conditioning to the brain to continue analyzing and focusing interacting and spending time and paying attention to these thoughts which is just like you're continuing playing piano over and over which makes you very good at playing piano and this ruminating and paying attention and wondering and worrying about it and interpreting the bullshit makes you be very good at constantly automatically spending time and attention to these thoughts and the brain learns that you want it to make more thoughts not that you want it but the signal to the brain when you pay so much attention to it it's like an exercise of the piano notes it builds bridges between the synaptic neurons for this to take more of the production that the brain does. But just like the piano playing, when you don't play for a while, you stop training, hmm? then there is a mechanism in the brain that is called the glial cells. Glial cells go on a scavenging at nighttime when you sleep. When you sleep, the brain shrinks about to 60%. So it opens road for these glial cells to go and find the bridges, the synaptic neurons, the bridges between synaptic neurons that are not being used to make you good at something. For example, if you don't play piano for a while, at night times they go and find the synaptic neurons that they were made for you to program yourself to play good piano. They build bridges for the neurotransmitters to pass through the information about how to be good in playing piano and you had become good in playing piano, they will find those bridges and recognize that they're not being used because you haven't played piano for so long. So they mark that with CQ1 protein and the microglial cells, when they mark that with CQ1 protein, they go and destroy it. So those synaptic neurons that had bridges built between the two ends become free so you can use them to become good at something else. In other words, when you don't play piano, because of this mechanism that I just explained so briefly to you, there's a lot more to it, but explained so briefly to you, this mechanism make you no longer be good at playing piano because you didn't play it so long 
and they want to preserve the ability and make available synaptic neurons for you to use them for something else. Therefore, they go and destroy those bridges that made you very good in playing piano. So you can now use it to become good at something else, playing guitar or tennis or something else. So whatever you practice a lot, when they used to say practice makes perfect, they really meant when you practice, these synaptic neurons are created, the bridges are created, and you become good at it because you're conditioning the brain to do this. So now when you don't practice the piano, you are not as good as you used to be. Same thing. When you keep thinking and paying attention to these intrusive thoughts, you become very good at paying attention and having intrusive thoughts being created more and more. When you don't and use Dr. Schwartz's principles and four steps and all the other psychologists, um, experts, uh, uh, suggestions and recommendations how to deal and manage with intrusive thoughts, then you're actually, in fact, are taking your attention away from it, from the piano playing, from these uh, thoughts that they show up, and therefore you create a condition where the brain gets a signal that mm, there is no attention or interaction coming from this production of mind, the brain thinks. Therefore, it learns and is conditioned to stop making them. Mm? That's how you rewire your brain. So the four steps of Dr. Schwartz is very necessary for you to deal with OCD and OCD subsets, such as HOCD and other OCD subsets. So having said that, what you need to do is to allow thoughts to be there, apply the four steps, and I'm going to put the link for you here, so you will simply rewire the brain and recondition the brain from making more of these thoughts because of your attention to making less of these thoughts because of your lack of attention. So you allow thoughts to exist just as you allow things to exist in the world, but you find your own pathway. Allowing something to exist doesn't mean you agree with it. It just means that, well, okay, whatever. It's there. Okay, what does it do? I just pass by and focus on what I want to focus, which is the third step of Dr. Schwartz, which is refocus. Now, you will find it. Let me put that video for you up here so you will be able to choose it and use it. And there we go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. No, okay. Four steps. There we go. It's a 21 minute and 38 second video. But it's very informative. I have discussed uh, Dr. Schwartz's four step in there, step by step, and explained it as he had explained it himself, but I just elaborated on it. So here it is. And you should have it by now. Okay, I hope that uh, answers your question. That was the first question, but you say... Yeah, for example, when I look at my mom, the thought itself doesn't show up, but the memory of the sexual intrusive, yeah, it doesn't matter. Is there a way to do Yeah, no, no. You don't need to delete the memory. If the, the less you pay attention to it, the memory will be deleted automatically. I also have another video that I'm going to put up here for you guys, for the ones who are interested how to delete the memory. And it explains the mechanism that I explained to you in more detail for you to know exactly delete memory. Here it is. This video is called How to Delete Your Memory. In fact, it just teaches you the mechanism of automatic deletion of memory or things that we actually don't use, which was what I explained, but this is a detailed version of it. So here you are. I think that will help you out. And remember, you guys, I'm sure I'm not exaggerating when I say you don't hear these sort of discussions on any other channel on YouTube. So I want you to be mindful of this channel and promote it as it helps you here 
it can help many other people. But we are still unknown. Hmm? 12, 13 years after, in regards to breakups and how to move on and so on, and with the role of the psyche in the emotional hardship, and then a few years after all these discussions about OCD and OCD subsets and so on, we're still only about 26,000 subscribers. It should be 2.6 million, as far as I'm concerned. This channel is very valuable, very helpful, lots of good information. I want you guys to take responsibility and help this channel to grow, which is to help the mankind, the people who are around the world, like yourselves, don't have access to that information or psychology, psychotherapists, and so on and so forth, so they can benefit from this at the comfort of their home. But I need you guys to take some responsibility. As you can see, I do all these from my heart. I spend lots of time and spend lots of time with people who actually don't have any money. And I do that for them, for free. This is not to boast about it, but it is to bring your attention that you can be part of this helping the community by promoting the channel so more people will find out. They come here, there's over 3,000 videos on this channel, and then they will get to know if they can come to the live streams, all free. But then, of course, if they wanted to know more and have a discussion privately with me, they can go on my site, mindatsixtruth.com, and make an appointment with me for us to discuss what's concerning you, uh, them one-on-one -on, -one on Skype. Subscribe on my channel, visit my channel, and go through the videos that you might be interested in. Mindatsixtruth.com, making it one step away to talk to me one-on-one -on, -one on Skype and discuss what's concerning you. I'll talk to you soon.